By the year 1529, the world has been split into two imaginary boundaries that were free for two nations to claim and explore, the kingdoms of Portugal and Spain, mainly the crown of Castile. The world has been split along two meridians, one over here and another over there. Do these lines look familiar to you? If so, then what you may be thinking about them is correct. These are the lines that were created through the treaties of Tordesillas and Zaragoza. They both do the same job, marking the boundaries for who gets to claim what land on this world, Castile getting to claim any land discovered in this zone, and Portugal getting to claim any land discovered in this zone. Tordesillas being the first of the two, and being the one to split the new world, is like the older sibling who's clearly the favourite. Then there's Zaragoza, the younger sibling that gets the, oh yeah, you exist to fix a problem treatment. So how did these two treaties come to exist, two of the most impactful treaties from the late medieval era? When Columbus unknowingly discovered the Americas while finding another route to Asia, he famously said, Damn, Asia is closer than I thought. And after sailing around the area to make sure he certainly did find Asia, and not some islands that were part of a different giant landmass that was right in the way, his next destination was back to Iberia, to tell the King of Portugal, John II, and the King and Queen of Spain of his discoveries, and to show off a few little trinkets he brought back with him. The King and Queen of Spain were surprised to hear that sponsoring some Italian explorer had paid off. Seeing the goodies he brought back with him, they believed the future of an almighty Spanish empire to be in the possession of these new lands. As for Portugal, they were also surprised, but in a more negative way, because this discovery not only proved that there was more land out west, but for two other reasons. It was a Castilian-sponsored voyage out west, which Portugal refused to sponsor before them, and it was a breach of an old treaty made between the two some years earlier, in 1479, where it gave Portugal the right to claim these islands since they were south of the Canary Islands. Portugal tried using that claim, which Castile shot down with their own claim, being that they discovered it, so it should be theirs. Portugal says, nah uh and Castile responds, yeah uh which roughly translates into these two creating a dispute from these newly discovered islands. Portugal didn't stick around to let Castile claim the islands in the west. They were eager to claim them themselves, sending a threatening preemptive warning to their neighbour next door that they were setting up a fleet of their own to sail straight to these new islands to rightfully claim them as part of Portugal. This notion led to Spain responding to this warning as a simple whoa whoa, let's not do anything hasty here, wishing to not go to war with Portugal and called for a peaceful solution to the problem, to which King John had agreed to, setting in the problem as the distinguished royal leaders they were, and got their ambassadors to do all the work for them to find a peaceful solution. But I would be lying if I said it was the men with the fancy title and clothing doing the diplomatic talking, because they had a special guest with them, one who acted as a mediator in discussion, and even came up with the original proposal. No one special, it was only Pope Alexander VI. The Pope, who was 100% Aragonese and 100% totally unbiased to his Castilian brothers, had proposed a singular line drawn right here. Given all the current discovered islands and almost the entirety of the undiscovered Americas to Castile, while everything sat east of the line, was free for Portugal. But there were two small catches, the first being that any nations or land under rule from Christians were exempt from being claimed. The second catch was this proposal kind of fucked over Portugal, while granted they were able to uphold the current possessions they had in the Atlantic, the Pope had neglected to mention Portugal in his proposal altogether, essentially not giving Portugal some sort of leeway in what they can do on their side of the line. Certainly no bias here against the Portuguese, no siree. Of course, King John was rightfully pissed by this for getting snubbed out of this arrangement, but he didn't just back down with this demarcation line and its conditions. Rather, he pushed for the line to be further negotiated with the Spanish royals themselves, and it moves over to the left slightly to ensure greater protection of Portuguese ships voyaging around West Africa and to solidify a bigger chunk of South America to claim, which they may or may not have secretly known about the existence of before Spain did. And that was made the final decision. The new line was moved in 1494, with them both gaining this on both sides respectively, although they tried to claim it was slightly further left or right to try and give them some extra favourability. They both respected each side, and there would never be another dispute about newly discovered islands between these two again. For nearly 30 years, and then they disputed again, this time either in Southeast Asia, over some more islands. 
But these aren't just any ordinary islands. Alright, they do look like normal islands, but if you look past all the grass, the trees, and natives that are soon to be either killed or enslaved, these islands possess one greatly sought after good. Spice. Commonly dubbed as the Spice Islands, the Maluku Islands were the point of the second dispute between Portugal and Castile, over the whole claiming new lands for themselves in their zone they had going on. Wow, a dispute over the ownership of a bunch of islands. Now where have I heard that one before? The Spice Islands were originally discovered by the Portuguese in 1512 after a series of setting up trade posts along India. Portugal had enjoyed relative peace for a few years until Spain decided to argue against the island's right of ownership with Portugal, by claiming the Treaty of Tordesillas had went around the entire world, instead of just splitting the Atlantic. The Spanish had begun their complaining in 1518 and had agreed to send a fleet led by Ferdinand Magellan to the islands. However, the Spanish didn't take the same route Portugal did, instead they went west, again, heading all the way round South America, through the Pacific, and into the Spice Islands, then headed straight back to Spain, with the death of most of the crew, including Magellan, but at least they were able to circumnavigate the whole world, so clearly there's a bigger gain over losses here. After this expedition, the Spanish had now firmly believed that the Spice Islands were right on their side of the line, and sent out another expedition to the islands again, but this time, they were ordered to colonise the islands and set up forts from Charles V. Oblivious to the knowledge that Portugal already had actual presence there first, they both got into a little fight. Spain lost, but they didn't give up on the claims, they so very badly wanted these islands for themselves. Resolutions to the dispute was beginning 1524, with both sides sending over some people with the smarts and know-hows to draw in a line on a map, hoping to appease both sides true and fair. Unfortunately, they could never get it right, because both sides had this weird thing of self-gratification, where they so genuinely believed that by giving the islands to themselves, it would solve the whole dispute. But no, because as you can already tell, the other side also wanted the islands, so they'd counter this idea with their own proposal, which would just be the same thing. Clearly this wasn't going to cut it, so both sides chose to adventure around the area and surrounding islands, even reaching islands that make up the modern day Marshall Islands. But throughout all this, a conclusion was eventually made in 1529, with a separate treaty being created, the Treaty of Zaragoza, defining the limits of how far west and east both sides could begin to explore and claim territory. The Spice Islands were granted to Portugal, albeit King John of Portugal was to pay Charles 350,000 gold ducats if he wanted Spain to relinquish any claims to the islands. This choice of bribery was so Charles could use his gold to fund, shall we say, local warfare developments. Everything east of the line goes to Spain, and everything west goes to Portugal, which leads us to the world now properly being split between these two to claim more accurately. Even though both of these boundaries weren't heavily enforced against each other, you can see that both abided by the treaties to a great extent, minus a few spillovers here and there. But you know who didn't abide by these boundaries? That's right, literally every other future colonial power, because they never signed the treaties to begin with making any extreme claims from either future Spain and Portugal to get slowly dwindles down into actual possessions, and any attempt of enforcement of the treaty from them to against anyone else would have probably been met with laughter. To think that both treaties came from a dispute over newly discovered islands. Oh well. But anyway, that's all for the video. I hope you have learned something new about these treaties, and I also hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.